okay uh, ears so ears are I find if there is anything on a horse that's going to cause me any issues at all it will be an ear um, especially fluffy ones like this little mare's ears uh, they are quite sort of chunky ears lots of fluff um, and th actually the photographs really quite clear uh, so there is quite a bit of detail in there so I'm just going to start um, creating these ears building on them uh, and talking you through the process that I go through uh, so I'm going to start with probably the warm grey 4 uh, so even though she's a grey horse the the colour is still quite dark so I've got a very faint outline here which I'm just going to strengthen up slightly um, we have got some fluffy areas which we will start to introduce but I just want to make sure that I've got the correct shape again it's important to get the shape correct because the ears really do form a big part of a, um, a horse's personality so it's important to get them uh, the right shape okay so this is quite fluffy down here but we can still introduce a, a vague outline that we can just um, blur out later on and then I've got a little bit of the this is some of the they've got, they've got some quite long sort of fluffy bits of hair coming down here and then we've got the part of the forelock coming in here which I'm just plotting in there and then this little ear comes in here like that and then we've got the forelock in there and again I haven't got a huge amount of um, outline that I've put on in this area uh, just because I, I prefer to have almost like a road map and then go from there and build in everything from there I just find it um, less confusing for me okay so this is that's the edge there okay so we've got a good shape to the ear that's all fine and then the next thing I'm going to do is actually plot in a bit of the shape of the inside of the ear so we've got lovely fluffy fur coming all the way around here and then we've got a darker area in the middle which um, I may well lighten up my reference photo uh, just so I can see a little bit more detail and that's something that I tend to do throughout my drawing process these fluffy bits coming in here I mean you don't have to get these absolutely spot on um, because you know it's the, the, it would change you know whenever you take a photograph the hair the way the hair lies would change anyway but um, you might want to get it absolutely spot on to the photograph but it's not it's not absolutely necessary and I find just by plotting these areas it just makes it um, a little bit easier when you come to add the colours in 
because you kind of know where you're going to be adding them. So it's not that I'm adding detail as such, I'm just, I'm just plotting shapes really. Um, I'm using a very light pressure. Um, it's the Clairefontaine pastel matte board, the white board, and I'm using mostly polychromos, the Faber-Castell polychromos. Um, what you'll see me do throughout this process is a lot of adding colour and taking colour away, which might seem a little bit strange, but the reason I do that is because I want to get the semblance of the hair sitting over the layering of the hair, so that the hair on the horse's um, ears are, is quite thick, and I want to be able to get the feeling of that. Um, in, in the ear. I also want to add in some colour. I'm just going to lighten up my photo slightly. Hmm. Okay, so I've uh, I, on my iPad, I've got my um, photograph on my iPad and I've just um, put it into edit mode and I've, I've actually clicked on the dramatic um, mode which has significantly increased the contrast so I can see much more of this dark area but I've also now got quite a lot of nice yellows and pinks in there as well um, which I can um, I can certainly look to add um, I probably will add some purpley bits I think. I think you have to be careful when adding yellow to animal fur, grey animal fur because it can look a bit look more dirty than anything else. Um, although some grey horses are quite yellowy uh, it just depends you know how, how it's um, how you feel it's looking and whether or not you can get away with it. So and then we've got a little area of this is where the fur changes direction down here. So just adding in these very rough guidelines. Um, these may or may not stay. Um, they'll probably they'll probably come out to be honest. But it's just giving you a a, a guideline really as to. Um, where, where to go next if you like and then all of this is fluff and actually a, a good pencil to use on on this hair outside would be um, if we start to actually plot in some of the colours would be the Caran d'Ache um, buff titanium titanium but I never can never know which, I never remember which way it is I think it's buff titanium uh, that's a really great base color to use especially on the white pastel mat as well it's like a pinky a, a pinky creamy really light color but it's a, a good neutral base uh, especially for um, when you when you're working with white fur So what I'm now going to do is actually plot in some of this dark area, but I'm not going to go in, on my photograph it's, it's black, um, but I'm not going to go in really, really dark because I want to be able to build on some of the fur that's kind of co coming in. Um, so I don't want to go in with a really, really hard pressure. So I'm, I'm sticking with my uh, warm grey four. Uh, I will probably pull in some of the dark indigo a little bit later on, um, but I just want to get a a good base down of where my areas of fur are going to go in the shadow and everything. I'm using really soft pressure. Um, so 
if you think about the softest you can possibly go on your pastel mat with making a mark you want a tiny little bit more pressure than that and I'm working in sort of like a almost random it's not particularly circles it's it's sort of uh, randomly sketchy marks um, but it's giving a, a nice even a, a feel to the layer and I'm keeping the pressure quite even so I'm not going in darker in areas or lighter in areas I'm just keeping it nice and even and basically what what I'm what I'm ending up with is um, I've, I've explained this before in some of my other videos it's almost like a ghost of what you're going to be drawing uh, uh, you know so you, you can see all of the little bits and you can actually see the ear um, starting to take shape but you haven't gone in really hard so you can take some of this away if you need to do very very easily and actually we, we will do we will come into here with some um, with some of the scotch tape uh, to bring in some of those the hair details but just and, and the other thing as well through doing this it it, um, it gives you the feeling <coughs> it gives you the feeling of the ear looking right from the start and and that I think is a big encouragement for you to carry on um, you know, if things aren't going right, it's quite easy to, be, to to become a bit disillusioned with it all. But if things are looking okay and they're looking like an, an ear, then it gives you, you know, it's it's almost you, you, you're excited to carry on and add layers because it actually looks like a proper ear. Um, you know, and and I would always encourage anything you can do that's going to make something look relatively good early on um, is is a good thing to do because you do go through some quite ugly stages with coloured pencils and it is very very easy to give up and you know screw your paper up and throw it away and try and start again but but actually you you start to you start to come to terms i think with how things look at early stages especially if you've done hundreds and hundreds of pieces um you know you, you really do start to come to terms with how how awful some pieces look early on um, but if you can use your techniques to make things look relatively pretty then it's um it becomes a little bit easier and then you start to really enjoy doing your work i must admit you know when i when my alarm goes off in the morning and I and I start to try and remember what day it is. <laughs> um, you know, if I've got something lovely on my drawing board, I really, really am itching to get back into my studio. Um, especially if it's looking, you know, if it's looking good, um, then um, you know, it's it's. I really look forward to coming back into the studio and cracking on with it. So I'm not specifically doing details, and 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 this isn't how I would um, draw the same ear on the dark paper. I'm using a completely different technique, um, and I do tend to come in much more early with detail. Um, but I'm trying to just plot all of the uh, the shadowy areas, really, the darker areas. But I'm only using tonal values rather than colour um, the, the tonal values are in, are as important um, if not more important than, than the colour really because that's what's going to make your piece look real so that's that's all I'm doing and, and it's very it's, it is very uh, mo monotone so it is very um, there aren't any really dark darks or light lights but it's starting to come a little bit um, so just again in here just pulling out some of these hair changes
um, and again visualizing this hair and how the hair would feel um, you know you've got these little short stubbly bits of fur on these on the inside bits of on the um, outside edges of the ear um, and then you've got these bits that kind of curl in inwards and then you've got these very soft bits down here and these fluffy bits here so always sort of visualizing what your fur um, feels like uh, is going to help you alter the pressure alter the length of the stroke that you're adding okay so just adding in these little bits of fur down here anything you can do to make your life easier when you're drawing then I would say go for it you know editing your photograph so that it's more contrasty or you can see more color or you can see um, more detail because you make it lighter then you know go for it I'm seeing quite a lot of blues around here and what I need to be careful of because I've uh, um, edited my photograph so it is quite vibrant I need to make sure that what I do up on the ears isn't going to be isn't going to look very different to what's going on um, further down in the um, in the portrait so I, I mustn't get carried away and start plotting all of these colours that aren't then going to follow through into the rest of the piece. Um, so I probably will revert back to the original in a second. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to use, um, I'm going to go with the uh, dark indigo and I'm just going to Um, start to darken up some of these areas because I'm, I'm happy with where these are sitting and I can still take some out if I need to so where these little there's like little hairy bits and everything that are coming in here I'm just using these little short strokes just to indicate those the, the fur overlapping but we can take those out if we need to do with the magic tape later on so I'm just going to So again I'm using a light pressure and just adding that dark blue and we're going to come over here again and build build the um, the intensity of this dark area in the middle up but I don't want to go in too quickly. I think ears are quite a they're a, a tricky thing to draw and I don't know whether it's just because it, it, it's like um, you know we see all of that fluff and we just think oh god you know when you see like a curly dog and you think oh my lord how am I how on earth am I going to draw those curls and I think it's almost like you 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 block yourself from doing it because you feel I, th I think if you tell yourself you can't do something then you won't or you'll find it a real struggle to be able to do it because you know you're always going to have that feeling in the back of your mind I can't do this this isn't working blah 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 so I think um, I'm a bit I'm a bit a bit like Pollyanna really I, <laughs> I always seem to see the good in things and um, you know I'm, I'm a very positive person so I have quite a lot of um, you know I've got a lot of self-belief and I believe that I can do something and I think that really helps um, it's not it's not big headedness and it's not you know that I, I think I can do anything because you know obviously I can't but um, I think having that self-belief really helps you push through some of the things that you've that, that, that are a little bit more challenging um, 
and being positive about stuff and also just you know believing that if you if you do keep layering and that's you know a mantra that I keep on saying to myself keep layering keep layering keep layering because it, it really does work you know um, this paper takes a huge amount of layers um, and half the time when it's looking terrible it's because it's just it really isn't finished it's not even near finished um, and you've just got to have the um, the will to keep going really and to know that it will it will keep getting better <clears throat> so these are quite big ears um, it, it's quite a big drawing actually and I, I must admit I do prefer drawing on a larger scale to a smaller scale I find it much easier Obviously, there's more area to cover, but um, I find it easy to add the detail and everything in. So you can see how this is just building up, and then I'll, we'll, we'll go in in a second and we'll take some bits out, and you can see how that that then starts to look. Um, you may well see different colours um, than, than, than what I'm seeing. Uh, I, I think everybody sees the world with different colours and that's, that's absolutely fine. I think the important part of anything is the, t are the tonal qualities and the contrast. Um, and again, that's something that is really quite tricky to to get your head around is getting contrast and everything right I tend to go too light um, in my drawings and it's something that I'm always um, looking to develop and looking to, to push really is the contrast in my pieces um, it's almost like you're too scared to go too dark okay and you can see how I'm using my pencil on these bits of hair here because they're very soft fluffy um, longer hairs here so I'm, I'm using my pencil in this in a in the direction of the fur but in in a way that's going to kind of replicate the feeling of that fur okay right right so we're going to come in with um, some scotch magic tape I'm just going to take a bit of the tackiness off because I don't want to take all of the layers off and I'm going to use a little stylus and we're just going to randomly just kind of pull in a few of those bits of hairs here so I've taken a, um, quite a lot of the tackiness off because otherwise it's going to pull out too much of the fur um, but you can see straight away this is starting to give you some really nice shapes in here um, and you know what what is looks like hair coming through this this is such a good tip is the scotch magic tape um, I watched a video um, Lacry Fine Art who you know was showing how to use the the Scotch Magic Tape and it's just like oh my god it's just a lifesaver it's such a fantastic tip um, and I use it with all of my um, drawings on on the white see how cool does that look that looks so cool um, it, it's you know it's just a, a brilliant brilliant um, little little trick that that works so well um, okay. and again you don't have to follow your photograph exactly for every single tiny piece of hair um, because th that would just drive you well it would drive me crazy but I mean if you want to do you know go for it but um, don't feel you have to Right, so we're starting to get this really nice area here now of the of the fur. 
and actually I'm going to come in with, um, with the black and just darken up this middle bit here um, just from the middle outwards and just increase the contrast in this bit um, and I'm going to try and miss out these little lines that I put in or I'll go over depending I don't want it to look like stripy and everything I want it to look um, you know real so it might be that I might have to kind of fade but just come in and of course we can go back again later with the scotch magic tape and add some more if we need to do and just increase the intensity here down this middle bit And you can another thing that I tend to do as well is I don't go I don't go far enough out um, I, I, I sometimes find it hard to judge how how far to go out um, which is where the measured measuring tool and everything comes in um, you know because I don't have all of the lines and everything plotted in from before so that's something to just watch as well not so much with the ears but things with eyes um especially dog eyes if you have got those the the little patches of dark at the corner of the eye it can it can completely change a portrait if you don't add enough color uh, you know if you don't get the shape exactly right and the size of it right it can completely change everything and sometimes it's really hard to see even though it's there in front of you, it's really hard to see the um, the size of some of the shapes. Okay. So just We can come over this again as well and, and make it even darker a little bit later on, but we're just getting a good base down here. And then we can start plotting in some of the colours around here. So the pressure I'm using is... I suppose on a scale of one to five, if one was just touching the paper, this is probably a three. So you can see how I'm gripping my pencil. I'm gripping it almost like I'm writing. And actually I'm holding it quite tightly, which I shouldn't be doing because it, it'll, it'll end up making my fingers ache. But um, I'm not, the, the pressure isn't, relevant to how I'm holding the pencil. I'm holding the pencil like this just so I can get the um, the control basically. So if you find it easier to do, you know, um, to do things in a different order, you know, if you find it easy to do the outside of the ears first, blah, blah, you know, whatever, whatever works for you, there's no right or wrong way at all. Um, you know, there are so many different techniques out there. nice bit of 
softness coming here there's actually got a really nice um, graduation coming from it which I, I want to make sure that I capture in this area down here as well <clears throat> And you know my my pieces are they are very detailed. Um, I do like my fur to look real. I do like my hair to look real. Um, you know I do like to cover all of the tooth. That that's my preference, uh, and that is why it does take me quite a long time to create pieces. Um, you know. You, it depends on what sort of techniques you like to do and and how you have visualized your final piece um, but I, I I mean I'm a, a bit of a perfectionist I suppose when it comes to stuff like this um, I used to be a, a graphic designer and a typesetter so I'm quite controlled uh, with things like this and wanting to make every single little thing perfect which obviously can be a, a real hindrance but I think that's that, that's how my portraits have developed and and that's what people recognize as being my portraits is the amount of detail I put in them um, The more I work on the white pastel mat, the more I just, just love it. it it's like having a, a hot press paper, but with the capability of adding loads of layers. It's a really, really superb surface to work on. <clears throat> okay. So her little ear is, is starting to look quite nice now um, and I'm going to start adding some colour around the edges and bringing some colour into these areas here. <coughs> so I'm going to use I'm going to sharpen it up I'm going to use the um, Caran d'Ache Luminance Buff Titanium and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out just some of these edgy bits around here and up here. So this is just my um, putty eraser, I think it's a Faber-Castell one and it's great, it picks up all of the pigment um, but then you kind of need it and the pigment disappears, um, so which is pretty good. I'm just going to lift off some of this as well. Okay. And then I'm going to go in with my Caran d'Ache Buff Titanium um, and literally just put a layer of colour in over the in this entire air, ear um, area around the outside. Um, and I'm going to sort of give it a little bit of a, a, f a I don't know whether you can see it, yes you can, a bit of a fluffy, a fluffy look around the edges, which is, oops, which is why I wanted to get rid of um, any of the edgy bits. Okay, so before I forget, I'm going to revert my... Revert my image back to how it was before, because I don't want to. Um, I don't want to end up with the ears looking so different to the rest of the horse. Now I'm going to be very careful when I come into this black here because, because of the surface and because of this particular brand of pencil, the um, the Caran d'Ache Luminance, which is a very soft 
buttery um, wax based pencil if I bring it into this black area here it's going to smear the black out so I'm, I'm going to be quite careful um, that I'm not I'm not bringing the black out I just want this to be quite clean in here so I'm not going right up to these black bits but I can I can um, I can work into there um, I'm using probably um, I'm using quite a hard pressure actually just to get this base colour down it's a it's um the the beautiful pencils are the luminance pencils and they have some really lovely light colors into here this is actually cold around here than the other side this side's really quite warm and this side's quite and yet this bit here is warm as well so I'll just carry on just roughly popping in Again, when we get to the longer hairs, and these are little short, fluffy, fluffy bits. Okay. <clears throat> go in with the warm grey 4 again and I'm just going to start popping in the texture of the fur now what I'm not doing it might look like I am but what I'm not doing is drawing every single piece of hair um, hair in um, but I'm using my pencil strokes to help replicate the um, the look of fur on, on the horse's ears and there'll be some areas that are smooth some areas that you know we we kind of add a little bit of detail a little bit of shadow and everything in And the other thing that you need to be very careful of and aware of is the direction of the fur. You need to make sure that it's um, you're following the direction of the fur carefully. So what this is going to do is just give me a now a good base. Once I put this in, a good base to then start adding in more tonal values and taking some of the um, hairs out again but I'm going to get a good texture in here so we could have used a um, a warm grey one actually instead of the the buff titanium as an alternative that would have worked equally as well so we're just adding a bit of softness in those ears
think sometimes when you know you, you start to create something it's it's, um, it's bizarre you'd think that you would remember every single you know every time you come to do a, a, a horse's ear you remember the last time you did it and, and you really well I don't um, you know and it's like you have to really think it through um, you know before you start and then you start and you think oh god am I on the right lines am I doing it right here and then it starts to work and you think oh yeah right okay this is working um, and I think as well every piece that you that you draw you learn something new and you learn something new about the paper you learn something new about your pencils you know you learn something new about your techniques so you're learning all of the time and you know if I if I drew this horse again in six months time I'd probably tackle it again quite, you know quite differently um, it's just how you kind of grow and develop okay so you can see again that I've, I'm changing my um, the stroke of my pencil all of the time to replicate the feel of the fur so this is quite dense uh, uh, fluffy hair down here whereas this hair is a little bit coarser um, and, and even though this is nowhere where they're finished um, you know you can still bring in the feel of that lovely smooth fluffy I'm not sure whether smooth and fluffy go work together but um, you know what I mean So then we can start to add a little bit of that shading in there as well which we can we can bring in again on later layers but you started to bring a semblance of that in now you know so that the, the feeling is there the look of it's there already okay and then let's so we've got some quite darky bits here okay so we're three quarters of an hour in which might seem a, an awful long time for not having done an awful lot um, but you know you're, you're getting a, a lovely base down on this ear The little detaily bits will will come. Just need to make sure that I've got the shape of this ear right. You have to be really careful, you know, when you don't have a a hard outline, making sure that you actually um, everything the, the right shapes. And again, following the direction of the fur. So the fur down this side actually starts to come down like this. So it's got it coming this way. And then and these are the, these are the little bits of detail that I, I really really enjoy you know I, I like seeing the, the the tiny bits of detail and 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 adding those and I don't really ever get bored um, of doing the detail This, this bit here I just need to make sure that I get the right the hair change the, the change in direction of the hair in the correct place and this is what I was talking about before you know I'm 
it's very easy to put the you know the change of hair direction here and then you end up with an ear that's you know this bit's quite narrow and this bit's really fat so it's it's important to 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 get it working properly and and actually we maybe need to bring this the darker bit out and we can do that so that's not an issue and because you're you know you're these aren't the um these aren't particularly the hair details at the moment but they are it's the texture of the fur and we can start to build on that in the next few layers and we can start to build on some shadowy areas um, so that you you really get the feeling of the 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 fur that's the only thing with doing the detailed work like this and working quite long hours my fingers do tend to cramp up which is why I've kind of got my little finger stuck out at the, on a on an angle it just gets a bit stiff okay so the hair's starting to come up this way now Need to bring this uh, darken this area out a wee bit more so I'm going to use the dark sepia which is um, like a sort of a brownie a brownie gray and just pull these dark bits out a little bit more Again, being careful to follow the direction of the fur. And this is literally just um, following your reference photo. Um, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no sort of a, a huge amount of skill or or anything like that at, at, at the at the moment. It's literally just following your reference photo um, and and getting these areas in. We can go in here and we can darken little sections up and, and almost sort of shade them in slightly and use a little bit more pressure in between, you know, just to, to darken some of the areas up a little bit. And it, you know, it does it does take time, but it, for me, it's important that every part of the animal, you know, you have taken as much time and care over as you know the 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 bits that are more detailed, like the eyes and everything, um, because it really it really shows, you know, if you if you rush an area. I used to I used to find forelocks and manes, you know, really quite difficult. So it would be, you know, you'd rush them and you'd just be like, oh, that's, you know, it's fine. And you, you'd almost expect them to happen quicker because, well, it's just a mane or it's just a forelock. But actually, you still have to take the time. You still have to spend all of that time layering um, to get the, the 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 detail that you need. Um, 
you know on on a on a portrait the the details in, in every single aspect of the portrait are important um and it, it is it's funny how you just expect things to kind of end up coming together quicker um You can see I'm f always following the direction of the fur. And we're now starting to build in, in places, just build in some shadowy areas and leave some of the highlighty bits. And just so if you were going to add a yellow um, like a yellow ochre or something like that these would be the areas that you would add them just on the um, as they're coming out of the the ear here that's where they would work best I think it's always difficult with a with a gray to you know do you just do you just do the grey colours or do you try and add something and it's always nice to make it more colourful but it's then working out well okay so what colours would I use and where would I use them because at the moment I haven't really used any colours apart from greys I think this little layer is looking okay I've done in in the past. I've, I've created ears, and I thought, oh gosh, it was so frustrated. You know, when they when they're not coming together properly, and then you end up rubbing them all out, or you know, scotch tape all over them, and trying to start again. And it's just like, oh my god! And and it's it's almost like you have to make yourself just stop, slow down, work out what you're doing, what's your process going to be, how are you going to do it, and then follow that process rather than just go in and you know wildly you know try to add strokes and everything without having a um you know an, an end result in your head as to what you want it to look like so actually following a process and for this it was you know starting off with the the, the plotting the the shapes of the dark areas putting that dark bit in and then you know working around that um that seems to have worked quite nicely. Oops, that's another tin to be careful of, and that I'm always doing. I'll look at my thing and then I'll let go of my pencil and oop like that. <laughs> Not such a good idea. Let's see if we can land. That was a good a good demo, wasn't it? I have to take that out with a scalpel. Let's come out. Yeah, be careful of that. <laughs> I did that on purpose so you could see. Um, okay. And just, you know, we're just adding really, really soft layers in here. And as you add the soft layers, that's where the detail starts to come. You know, what I'm not doing is I'm not drawing around every single tiny hair and, you know, and and working the detail in that way we're working it in by adding colour and then I'm just going to lift some again in a minute um, so we can see wh where we're at um, and, and my work is detailed but it's only detailed through adding all of the colours and the shapes and the layers when you get to bits like this where there's no you can't actually see any of the hairs um, you know the, the individual hairs that's where I like my pieces to look the same as the photograph so it's soft dense fluffy fur you can't see any of the the, the individual hairs so I don't want to see any individual brush stroke uh, pencil strokes 
And I think that, again, is where a lot of my time is taken up, is is trying to get rid of pencil strokes. All right. So we're going to come in here with a... Just darken this area up a little bit. And these are these are sort of like little short um, bits of, of fur. So I'm I'm almost sort of like adding little dotty areas um, because the fur is actually sticking up and pointing straight at me. Um, so you can't really see it, but it's very dense. So just adding sort of like little little dots. We can increase those a little bit um, later on as well. That just gives the feeling of that that dense fur that's um, that's sticking up and, and coming towards you, and then and then it just changes direction slightly. And then these bits of fur are quite short and dense again, and there are some deep shadowy bits in there. So using the sort of you know a stroke that replicates that it's going to help okay so in the dark sepia is a really really useful pencil because it is neutral um you can use it really lightly as a as almost like a warm brownie gray or you can use it quite with the pressure quite heavy heavy uh, almost like a black um so i would say it's definitely a pencil to have in your kit i don't have a full set of any of my pencils I would absolutely love to have full sets of, of the um, the Faber-Castell polychromos and the Caran d'Ache luminance and Pablo's I would love to have full set I've got a full set of the um, the light fast the new Derwent light fast and I have full set of the pro color as well um, but I would really love to have full set of the polychromos and the pablos to put it on my wish list okay All right so I'm sitting back I'm just having a look at um, the tonal values of this ear I'm having a bit of a squint at my reference photo so i've got this area down here this is this is this is good this is good and dark i'm going to go over it again i'm probably going to go over it with um the dark sepia or walnut brown something like that um i need to pull out a few dark bits around here um and i've got some more darker bits to pull out around here as well um And then I've got some lighter bits in here that I just need to pull out a little bit. So I'm going to pull out the lighter bits, I think. Again, I'm going to use the Scotch Magic Tape and I'm going to take some of the stickiness off because I don't want it to pull out loads of um, pigment. Um, so I'm just going to lighten up this area here, just take some of the, the colour out of here because I want that to stay quite nice and light and down here as well. Um, I've got a little bit of an area in here that I just want to um, pull out slightly. You can see even though I've taken off some of the stickiness it's still and I'm using really light pressure it's still taking quite a lot of that pencil out because it is light and there aren't a huge amount of layers and then I just want to take out some here as well but I want to make sure that my hairs are coming this way You can 
see those coming in um, and what let me just lighten those up a little bit more what we can then do is we've got this lovely lightness we can then introduce sort of shadows that get darker and darker as they come into here and that's going to give us a really nice depth to the ear it's going to it's going to show um really show us that there's um the, the dark bit is set back and the the ear is like on a on a curve um okay so let's just do the same up here as well Right, and then I'm going to come into um, this area here. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my da -da -da -da. Uh, luminance lilac, no violet grey. Um, oh, a fabulous gorgeous gorgeous pencil and I'm just going to st start pulling out um, some of the areas around the edge of the ear um, and what I'm doing is I'm going to I'm shading so and I'm using a soft pressure again I'm shading so I'm not um, I don't want to see pencil strokes so I'm just shading these areas in Yeah, and just round the edges and I'm going to add a little bit of bit of floof on the top here um, this is just going to add a little bit of something and actually we could add a bit of um, dark dark blue in there as well at some point um, and I can come into here too up here so this is a great color for grays um, and actually for for any if you're drawing white fur it's brilliant for the um, shadow areas really really good for the shadow areas um, and it goes down really nice and softly as well especially on the white pastel mat um, I don't tend to use the luminance on the the dark grey pastel map um, for some reason but on the white it works really nicely so just adding in these areas here now when I'm looking at the, the reference photo I don't necessarily see um, purple or violet or whatever this color is I don't necessarily see that um, but what I don't want is I don't want a, I don't want a boring gray ear I, I want something that's got a little bit of life in it um, so you know knowing this pencil knowing how it works uh, on on the paper and knowing how it works with the the polychromos that I'm using I know that it's a a really nice grey to add in and the luminance have got another um, they've got the silver grey as well which is like a very pale blue and then they've got the light cobalt blue which is gorgeous and just adding little touches of that in fact I may well add some touches of yeah so I've got the um, it's going a bit faded now the light cobalt blue which is this lovely blue and then I've also got the um, the silver grey which again is a really nice blue um, so I'm just going to sharpen those 
um, and we can pull some of these into this area here and actually there's quite a lot of lovely sort of fluffy fluffy pale fur that's coming off this so just adding that that fluff on with these roundy motions Ooh. yeah that's gonna look that is just gonna look fabulous when I get this the um, the fur detail in the neck because it's quite a it's a really fluffy winter coat um, and it's quite dark there's some really dark blues in there so actually this is gonna look am amazing even though I say it myself um, when um, when I've got all of those colors in and the luminance on this paper are just the fabulous the light fast pencils as well work really really well um, on the um, on the white pastel mat they really do work beautifully okay I'm going to lift out a little bit of this color in here just so I can get some of the blue to come through and I'm going to use the light cobalt blue very lightly um, because I don't want a, a I don't want a crazy blue here but I just want a tinge of and I can knock it back if I need to do um, but that this is you know in nature you get the most fantastic colors and I and I just think adding some of those beautiful bright colors in just where the lights hitting or this picture was taken in the snow um, it's a commission from Canada and you know the lighting is is gorgeous and and that is going to be reflected into the horse's fur you can't see that particularly well I don't think on the video but on my drawing it's looking fab you know just just adding in these touches of of color just really brings it to life um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add some more oh, I've fallen in love with this blue now that that's it we're gonna have a blue here you know even the even just sort of like t touches around the edge you know it's just those little details Yeah, I wish I'd gone with all, actually I'm going to pull a bit of that out now. I wish I'd gone with all blue on there rather than, rather than the purple. Just lift some of that out. And it's funny the more you the more you work on a piece you know the more colors start to jump out at you I need to buy another one of these um, light cobalt blue I have pencil extenders um, I've got one pencil extender that fits the Derwent and the Luminance pencils um, because they're the thicker barreled pencils and then I've got loads that fit the, the polychromos and the um, Pablos um, I don't really like working with short pencils because it hurts my hand. 
Um, so I, you know, I prefer to work with with full full length. All right, so I'm going to lift out some of this up here as well as we come down here. See, I'm starting to see this ear now a completely different colour. Again, making sure that I follow the direction of the fur using quite a firm ish pressure. Just popping those hairs in. Again, I just want a bit of fluffiness. And actually, if you've if you've got just got the polychromos, um, you could use the sky blue. The reason I'm using the luminance is the feel of them, the, because they're much softer than the uh, than the polychromos are, and I and I just really like the feel of them on this paper. It's amazing actually, you know, we're drawing a grey horse. It's amazing how dark, um, you know, the um, the colours can be. to be filling the tooth of the paper um, it's not as difficult to do on the white in fact it's very easy to fill the tooth quite quickly and this is where you can run into issues with it starting to look a little bit smeary you know it starts to look a bit it can look a bit muddy It's just a case of keep going, keep building the layers. Um, you know, the, the the fluffy ears in particular are going to take a good few layers because there are the layers of the hair there. 
you know so it's um it can be really quite time consuming just getting it all in but it's worth it in the end because you get beautifully detailed ears So you can see how when I'm coming into the layering over this black and, and kind of um, blending it back out, uh, it's starting to create some quite nice soft edges in here and some pushing some of these shadowy bits back. And this is where the detail comes in. And when I talk about detail, like I've said before, I'm not drawing every single tiny hair, but what I'm doing is I'm drawing shapes, shadows, um, and, and clumps of hair. If I drew every single tiny hair, I think the, your brain would ha would go into overload. It it really would. I don't think it could cope with that amount of. Because when you look at an animal, you don't see every single tiny hair. I don't think you need to see that. Your brain can kind of fathom out what's going on. So I think you only need to have you know certain areas of detail, rather than tiny details all the way through. Um, you know, it's not, it isn't, it isn't necessary. If you want to draw every single tiny hair, well then, go ahead. And just building the colours up. Helps to um, helps to give you the feeling of the the depth of the ear as well, and that um, you know how it kind of it's going in and in and out. So I need an awful lot more contrast in this bit here, which I will add in in a second but I just want to add a little bit more. Shadowy areas here now. So you can see how it's coming together. I, I you know, I appreciate it is a slow process and, and I don't think colored pencil is, I think it is a slow process anyway. Um, some artists are speedier, some artists have, um, you know, different techniques, maybe they, you know, they, they, they put details in in a different way to me. Um, like I said, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't like to see any of the pencil marks particularly, I like to, I like my fur to look like, like, like fur. Um, so I, I try and get rid of all of those pencil marks, but that's just me. That's 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 just how I how I create. Um, there there are ways. Well, I'm not sure whether they speed things up. To be honest, um, you know, you could put a watercolor pencil a base layer on if you wished, but it, you've still got to you've still got to layer everything over the top. Um, and you know I mean it's a it's a brilliant it's a very you know very simple but effective technique um, you, you know that you, that you can use and it does it does give you a lot of cover coverage very quickly um, but then you do have to put in all the layers still uh, you know to get all of the detail so I wouldn't say that it, it speeds things up particularly and then um, you know you can add 
sort of pan pastel background uh, underlayers as well, which I know uh, you know a few people do with 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 great success. Personally, if I can steer clear of using anything other than colour pencils, then I do. Um, I don't use the odourless mineral spirits either, and it's not not because I don't agree with using them, um, because I have used them in the past. It's purely because they make me feel really poorly. Um, they give me migraines, um, and I'm not a sickly person, but they just make me feel so ill. So I don't use them. When I first started using coloured pencils, I did try. I think like I think like a lot of people, tried absolutely everything under the sun. You know, every single paper I could get my hands on I was using that every single you know thing that was going to help me speed things up I was using that um and um and I and I actually I think that's a really it's, it's quite a it's a good way of learning how things work and it's also a good way of of um developing your style and working out what what works for you um and what works for me I think is is just the pure pencil without anything else um you know I, I like using pure pencil um, and I like the challenge of trying to create something just using pure pencil um, I have used pan pastels for backgrounds I don't think I would I don't think I would have the patience to be honest to try and draw a background with with colored pencil so I I, I do use um, pan pastels for backgrounds So that's starting to come together quite nicely. So I'm going to go back in again with the dark sepia and just really darken up some of these areas in here. So we're going to get some really good contrast now. So I'm going to be using quite a heavy pressure. Because I want all of that tooth to disappear. I could come in with one of my Derwent blacks, my um, Lightfast blacks, they're, they're fabulous, the black or the midnight black are really good pencils with an awful lot of pigments, they, they cover uh, really nicely. But I think this dark sepia is doing the job quite well actually. just feathering that out this little ear So you can see, you know, watching these videos, um, you know, how, how long it does take to create. darkening up these areas and I'm going to come in again and pull out some lighter areas again and this is where I'm this is where, where I, when I talk about I don't go dark enough I need to be going darker in these areas here and it's almost like a too scared to go in dark and I don't mean dark dark I mean just you know sort of like a more of a mid a mid tone really and I'm using a light pressure 
and just um, just covering these areas so that the, it, there's a smooth coverage and then these kind of graduating down into the dark area there and take these up a bit more you'll notice I've got my um, glassine paper as well which I always use um, under my hand I try I try never to work with my hand resting on the on the actual surface of the paper um, because you can really the oil from your hand can get onto the paper and, and you can smudge what's underneath and I, I find the glassine paper um, works be better than anything else I've tried smoothie bits of longer fur okay so we're going to go with this fur again I'm going to go in with the um, cold grey four and just pull out a little bit more of this. some of these pencil marks around here as well actually I'll probably come over th these areas with like um, probably might do an up Yeah, the do an arctic or the um, I could actually use that's what I could use the luminance silver grey in there. So I'm just starting to smooth now. So coming onto these final layers here, and it, I'm just starting to smooth things out. So you can see we've built in quite a lot of detail without really going into a huge amount of detail you know it's just been about building the building the color layers and then adding colors into the shadows right 
let's look at using so this is the luminance silver grey and I'm just going to use this over the top here just to add a wash of this lighter colour and it's just going to blend ever so slightly the layers underneath and add a semblance of this lovely pale blue in there as well we can come into these little bits here where this hair starts to come in here what I'm trying to do is get rid of all of the um, the tooth of the paper I don't want to see any of the graininess coming through I don't mind the tooth of the paper um, coming through on things like eyes actually to be honest I think it can look quite effective um, but uh, in this case I, I don't I don't really want the tooth coming through so that's why I'm using this just to pull everything together make it all a little bit smoother see how it smooths really quite nicely blends quite nicely and gets rid of all of those nasty pencil lines And then you can use in these areas here where the hair's coming down, you know, you can you can add in a little bit of a, um, a, a graduated tint, if you like, um, so it's lighter and then it gets slightly darker. So you get, you really get the feeling of the the hair coming out of that middle of the ear. And then this is all really nice, soft, and that's what we want to get the feeling of, that lovely soft fur coming in there. That was a big sigh, wasn't it? Nearly, nearly finished with this now, I think. Let's come into this area here and just smooth off these bits. The other thing that you can do if you want to when you've got sort of to, to this stage and I'm going to go over this bit a, a little bit more as well and, and just darken that up some more um, you can go over with a it doesn't work so well on the white but you can go over with a really really sharp white polychromos um, Pablo something like that and um, just add in some really fine little hairs which we can we can try and do and it just gives it a little bit more um, makes it look a bit realer but I'm not 100% certain that it will work particularly well on the white pastel mat This is a, a cold grey too. I'm just going to pull out these bits here. In fact, I'm going to use I'm just going to use this tape just to pull out some bits of hair detail.
okay that's looking quite a nice little ear take my white and let's just clean up some of these areas here that is gone okay actually got the other one to do now <laughs> and that's the that's the that's the the thing isn't it you know with with the uh, eyes and ears you've got two of them so you've done one you have to do the other one in exactly the same way and have a have a matching pair um you know that's always a challenge we think I think that's quite a nice little floofy floofy ear actually that's what I think right let's take my black and let's just really darken up these bits here. So we think, um, you know, to create pieces using these sorts of techniques, I think you just need to have patience and the belief that it's it's going to work and actually you know it's lovely watching um, a drawing emerge taking um, you know taking photographs as you go along of your of the whip process you know you can really start to see how how your pieces start to come together and even videoing you know um, I, I actually find it um, I find it really good to talk whilst I'm drawing and talk through the process I actually work faster would you believe um probably not um <laughs> i actually work faster um and i don't become distracted with stuff um you know i'm always sort of stopping to you know look on facebook or you know something like that but actually i, I do quite like doing the voiceovers because you can you can almost talk through what it is that you're wanting to do and I, I just think it's um, it's always good to to get your thoughts out loud rather than have everything in your head. Plus, it's a it's kind of a form of mindfulness as well. You know, you, you you're chattering away, talking through what it is that you're doing. So you can't actually think about anything else. to go too crazy with this black I'm, I'm happy with that little ear I think there's going to be some additions to it um, but um, I think on the whole that's a nice little fluffy ear that's that's got good depth to it um, I'll probably add I'll probably add a little bit of yellow ochre in there in places um, maybe some browns but I am I'm okay with that um, and that that video has kind of shown you the the layering process and how to build up that sort of 3d effect of the fur um, so I'm hoping that that has been um, a useful video for you um, thank you for for watching um, and um, I'll crack on with the the second year <laughs>